Hello and welcome to the second instalment of reading my fanfics, When Worlds Collide. Yes, yeah, a multi-universe crossover this time, and there we go. Chapter 1, An Evil Enchantment Gone Awry. A long time ago, in an enchanted forest, an evil witch was working on a spell that was meant to send everyone who inhabited the forest into an, into an eternal slumber that could only be broken by true love's kiss. This witch was also an evil queen and stepmother to one of the inhabitants of the forest. She was stepmother to one Cinderella, a young maiden whose father wanted her to be happy But that didn't go according to plan. As this woman's daughters took priority over her. This spell should curse everybody in this forest, she said to herself as she prepared to cast a spell. Just as she was picking up her wand, Cinderella burst in with some friends, Aurora, Belle and Snow White who would all come to stop her. Put down that wand now, Lady Tremaine, yelled Aurora. You have no right to do this, yelled Belle. You'll curse us all, just stop it at once, yelled Snow White. That is the point of it, replied Lady Tremaine. As she waved her wand, was these three young maidens tried to get it out of her hand as they did so by showing that by shoving and knocking her about her spell was cast so powerfully that they were sure it hadn't just affected the forest it was originally meant for the girl stood back what have we done they all said in unison, out of guilt, over what they'd done. The enchantment was so strong and powerful that it left the forest after spreading there and went on spreading throughout the space-time continuum. It hadn't just affected the enchanted forest, but was about to create a massive rip in the fabric of space and time itself, spreading all over lots of other universes. What had those naughty girls done to the realms of imagination now? They had meant to prevent this spell from being cast, but they caused it to be cast so powerfully, the whole universe was now subject to it. But where was it going to settle first? Chapter 2 Doc, Marty and the Daleks We now take you to Hill Valley, California where Doc Brown and Marty McFly were just about to take a trip into time in the DeLorean time machine. They just seated themselves inside and set the flux capacitor into flux and time circuits for London, England, 10.35 a.m. on October 22nd, 2029. Here we go, Marty, you ready? said Doc. Ready, Doc, replied Marty. Doc reversed the car far enough to get it into the air and floored it to 88 miles per hour and they were blasted into the future where they flew around until they found a place to land by a police box. As they emerged from the DeLorean, they were ambushed by a gang of what looked like motorized pepper pots. Uh, Doc, what exactly are these things? asked Marty through chattering teeth. Doc looked at the strange robots. Great Scott! he exclaimed. Exterminate! cried one of the creatures. 
but before any of them could shoot, a tall man in a brown suit came rushing to their rescue, aided by a short, red-haired young woman. Leave these people alone! They've done you no harm, roared the man. He took out a screwdriver-like object and aimed at the robots, disabling them. Are you both all right? asked the young woman. We're fine, replied Dog. Thank you, mister. What's your name? asked Marty. Oh, how rude of me not to introduce myself. It's nice to meet you on the doctor, replied the man. It sure is nice to meet you too. I'm Dr. Emma Brown, and this is my friend Marty McFly. We're from Hill Valley, California, 1985, replied Doc. So who's your lady friend, and what are those things you'd saved us from? asked Marty. I'm Donna Noble, and these things we just saved you from are called Daleks, replied the woman. Then it hit them all, that they'd all crossed over from other universes. Doc, Marty, Doc and Marty realised they'd just met the Tenth Doctor and his companion Donna Noble. And they likewise realised they'd just met Doc Brown and Marty McFly from Back to the Future. No way, that's impossible, you're just fictional characters said the Tenth Doctor. So are you where we come from, but you're not our doctor and his companion, Doc told them. So that must be the TARDIS? asked Marty. At that moment, the Daleks unfroze, shouting, Exterminate! Run! yelled the Tenth Doctor. Doc Brown and Marty ran for it, dodging Daleks left and right, until they were safely back in the DeLorean, setting off for another time period. Just as things were starting to get worse, three more TARDISes appeared, and out one stepped the Sixth Doctor and Mel. Out of another stepped the Eighth Doctor and Grace, and out of the last stepped the Ninth Doctor and Rose and Captain Jack Harkness. They'd all come to join the fight against the Daleks. Only thing was, Doc Brown had quietly come back on his own, and was ready to join using a sonic screwdriver of his own invention. The Daleks exterminated over a hundred people, before yet another TARDIS appeared, and out charged the fourth Doctor, followed by Sarah Jane Smith, who were drawn in immediately to what was already a brutal brawl between Man, Time Lord, and Daleks. Chapter 3 My Little Tank Engine Far away on the island of Sodor, the engines were busy doing their daily tasks. Gordon was pulling the express, as per usual. Hurry, hurry, hurry! He called to his coaches as he thundered down the line. Meanwhile, the fat controller came to see Thomas at Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas? He said importantly. Yes, sir, replied Thomas. I've got a special job for you, said the fat controller. A special job, sir? asked Thomas excitedly. Yes, Thomas. A special job which would transport you through a magical barrier into a far-off land, said the Fat Controller. Where will it take me, sir? asked Thomas. I don't know, Thomas, but it will certainly be some experience for you. Off you go now, and good luck, said the Fat Controller. Yes, sir, said Thomas, and off he went, as he raced past the yard. Where Edward was, shout, was shunting trucks, he gave a little peep peep as he passed. On and on he went until he ran through the barrier into a strange land of nothing but grasslands, with straw houses, 
a library and a tree, a bakery that looked like it was made of cake, made out of cakes and sweets, and a boutique shaped like a carousel. He looked around himself and saw that instead of people, a herd of brightly coloured ponies of all sorts, bustling about their business. Where am I? He said in amazement as he came to a halt and looked around some more. Oh, don't fret, darling, said a white unicorn with a violet mane, who had come to take a look at him. Hello there, little pony. I'm Thomas. What's your name? said Thomas politely. Oh my, what an intriguing locomotive you are. I've never seen a talking steam engine before, said the pony. And I've never seen any talking ponies before, retorted Thomas. Do forgive me, darling. I am Rarity, and I own the Carousel Boutique, said the pony. It's very nice to meet you, Rarity. Can you tell me where I am, said Thomas. But of course I can. This is the land of Equestria, said Rarity. Equestria, repeated Thomas inquisitively. That's quite correct, my dear little... What sort of engine are you, anyway? <laughs> replied Rarity. I'm a tank engine, said Thomas. Well, Thomas a tank engine? How have you come into Equestria, asked Rarity. I got here through a magical barrier, Thomas told her. And where did you come from, she asked. I'm from Sodor, I'm from the Sodor Railway, run by Sir Topham Hatt, replied Thomas. Sodor? asked Rarity. That's right, Rarity. It's an island with lots of railway lines, and I work a branch line on the island, Thomas told her. And why have you come to Equestria? asked Rarity. I've been sent here on a special job for the Fat Controller, replied Thomas. Fat Controller? asked Rarity. Oh, that's what we call our controller, said Thomas. In that case, you're a very naughty engine, Rarity scolded. <laughs> Thomas just looked at her, puzzled, and went on his way to Cantalot. Upon his arrival in Cantalot, he was greeted warmly by Princess Celestia, a white alicorn with a striped mane and tail, and a picture of the sun on her flank. She took a liking to him straight away and briefed him on his mission as arranged by both her and the Fat Controller, which he understood and set to work at once. While Thomas was busy with his special mission for the Fat Controller in a, an Equestria, he met Rainbow Dash, Twilight Sparkle, Pinkie Pie and Applejack, who thought he was a brilliant contraption as they'd never met a talking locomotive before. It wasn't long before Thomas was done with all his jobs, and was on his way back to Sodor. As he approached the magic barrier between the worlds, he sped up and raced through it into Sodor. Just as the barrier was closing, a blur of rainbow colours came shooting past him. It was Rainbow Dash who crashed into a platform. Thomas rushed over to check on her. Rainbow Dash, are you all right? He asked. She flew up into the sky. I'm fine, thanks, Thomas, buddy. She replied. As the porter opened the doors, the other five ponies cantered onto the platform. Cinders and ashes, he, he exclaimed. <laughs> And that's the end of part one, guys. Part two, next time.